Hello everyone. So as promised, I'm going to talk a little bit more about counter evidence and fallacies today. Um, so this is uh, the announcement that will be posted, but it will include this video. So it's still in draft status, but this is basically a list of some of the uh, sources that I include and also a couple things down here that I want to talk about um, in terms of uh, your planner. So you can see that I have a list of all of the different articles that I mentioned last time. If you haven't looked through these, please do. Um, one thing I wanted to say, because I'm going to talk about fallacies today, so I'll say it here and then I'll say it again when we talk about fallacies, is I want you to ignore the section on formal fallacies. It is not helpful for this particular argument. Um, it's actually very confusing, so just ignore it. Our article is inductive, um, which is something you don't necessarily need to know. But the point of it is that our argument is going to commit logical errors um, in terms of informal fallacies. So there's not going to be, we don't have deductive elements, so there's not going to be a formal fallacy in the argument that we're pulling apart. So what I would like you to do um, is focus in on informal fallacies. Another thing uh, that I want to remind everyone is that original and primary refers to the ungrading by Susan Bloom article. Supplemental and secondary refers to that supplemental source approval um, article that you found and posted on the supplemental source approval board. So the counter argument that you included. The questions at the bottom of part two are a little confusing, so I clarify them. And if you want, what you can do is you can just take these and copy and paste them straight into your planner. Um, so these questions at the very bottom, right before language, you can just cut and paste the new questions in. These are, I've actually already done that with this copy, but when you look at your version, these questions will be a little less clear. They won't say Blum's argument. They'll just keep talking about the argument. And sometimes it's not very clear to tell if it's asking for your opinion on your original article um, or on your counter evidence argument. So I've tried in these questions to clarify that. So it's just that little block of questions right above part three language. I recommend you replace what's there with this message that I've included on the announcement, the questions I've included on the announcement. Okay, so what we have here, um, you can see that I've been working on this document. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of the formatting out of here. Last time, <clears throat> last time we talked about finding three different pieces of evidence um, and including the type, uh, pulling the evidence from the article, a sentence or two um, that supports this claim that you have listed up here, the author's claim that grades are not a good measure of success and should be, or not a good measure of learning and should be eliminated in higher education or at least minimized in higher education. That's your claim. Now you're gonna to wanna to identify at least three types of evidence that the author uses to support their claim. When we look at evaluating each piece of evidence, um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have your identify, your different pieces of evidence identified, one, two, three. And so this is asking, is it credible, accurate, and reliable? What persuasive appeal is being used? And that's what we talked a little bit about last time with ethos, pathos, logos. Those are the persuasive appeals. So this section we covered last time. What I wanna talk about today is counter evidence and fallacies. Um, so, one of the things that I want you to do is identify fallacies in the author's evidence. So go through the article and look for informal fallacies. Again, I'm gonna say informal fallacies. How do you do that? Well, here's my suggestion. If you're looking at this fallacies article, this is in the um, content section under learning materials. This video is good. This is an interesting video. Um, and you can see it's broken down into a section about formal fallacies and informal fallacies. Ignore this part. We do not care about formal fallacies right now. We care about informal fallacies. What is a fallacy? In general, it's an error in logic. It's an error in the reasoning of an argument. In an argument like ours, the author might commit an informal fallacy. That means that there's a problem with the content, not the structure of the argument, but the content that's included. In informal logic and rhetoric, a fallacy is typically an error in reasoning, and it's usually based in some kind of misconception or sometimes in some kind of presumption. 
These are some common logical fallacies. Because this is English class, if you go and look up a list of logical fallacies online, you're, they're going to have different names. There's going to be different ones included. Um, there are lots of different types of informal fallacies. But a fallacy is just an error in reasoning. So if you click on these, like let's say you want to know more about, where's the either or? I like the either, the false dilemma or either or fallacy. If you click on that, you'll see that it defines what the fallacy is. It's when the listener's forced to make a choice between two things which are not really related or relevant. An example, if you're not with us, you're against us. The presentation of this false choice where it's either this or it's this. The presentation of a false choice often reflects a deliberate attempt to eliminate the middle option. Um, so this is an example of a logical fallacy. This is a very common logical fallacy. Another common one is the red, I mean, is the hasty generalization. Um, so you can look at the definition and the explanations there. For each of these different types, if you click on the arrow, it'll give you a definition and um, an example. And what I would like you to do is pick a couple of them, maybe three types. I recommend maybe hasty generalization, um, correlation for causation, which is sometimes called come hoc ergo propter hoc. Um, I've heard it just called hoc ergo propter hoc as well. Um, and the either or fallacy. Pick those three and look for examples of them in the text. You might find multiple examples of one kind. You might find zero examples of one kind. I just want you to identify one or two things that you see as a logical fallacy and then explain what type of logical fallacy it is. So pick out a quote that doesn't seem quite right to you. Uh, <laughs> that looks like it's an example. And I would honestly, I think it's easier to look for a fallacy than it is to look for errors in logic and then try and name the fallacy. Um, so I would recommend just picking a couple different ones of these from the list and saying like, I'm gonna look for a straw man. I'm gonna look for the false dilemma. And then you can identify it right here by including the quote. Um, this about supplemental source information, remember I told you that supplemental source information is um, gonna come from your second source. So it's asking you to identify your second source. Give me the author, the title, the source name, and the date. Um, include that information there. And then the question is, what counter evidence is presented in your supplementary source? Um, so another way to even call this is what evidence is presented in your supplementary source, because you're gonna be including evidence that this source is including to prove itself. It's only counter evidence because your source is gonna be speaking against our primary source. So what evidence is presented in this supplementary source? Um, what I want you to do is exactly what you did above. Include a quote that you think is the um, is an example of a piece of the author's claim. So you're going to want to need to know what the author's claim is. Uh, and then you're going to want to identify what type of evidence it is. And you can see I've included some examples here. You want to include them. Um, well, this is actually specifically from the Thought Co. from a Thought Co. article, but these are examples that you you know you can see. Um, what I did was I went through my counter argument that didn't agree with Blum's position, and I found a couple pieces of evidence um, that they included for why they think grades are important, and I quoted them, and then I figured out what type of evidence they were. This is a fact. This is also a fact. There you go. And then finally, we get to these questions um, that are basically asking about how the counter evidence impacts Blum's argument. Does it, how does it relate to Blum's argument? Does this counter argument make Blum, Blum's argument stronger? Um, does it weaken Blum's argument? What does it do? Does it make it more or less effective? So these are some questions to kind of get you thinking along those lines. So those are the things that I want. Um, counter evidence, when it talks about counter evidence, um, is just evidence for the counter argument. So the article that you found, your supplementary source, doesn't agree 
with the original author, with Blum. Um, for some reason, the article that you found should be explaining why grades are in fact good or necessary or our tradition or a part of our system, whatever it is. It should be putting forward an opposing theory. And so any evidence to support that opposing theory is counter evidence to our primary source, which is the Blum article. So we're just trying to kind of figure out what does the other side say? What's their proof? And how effective is the other side's argument? That's the basic gist of counter evidence here. So those are some things to keep in mind as you move forward. Um, yeah. So good luck with uh, part two. And then when you're done, you know, this will be in the same document. So you will have had um, part one already filled out. You'll fill out part two, and then you'll just upload that to the submission link.